Hello and welcome to Sharing Your Great Practice. Now this week we're in Lydney, a small town in the Forest of Dean, and the pupils and teachers of Whitecross School are going to tell us all about what they're doing regarding sustainability and green issues. White Cross School in the Forest of Dean is an engineering college and they use this specialism to teach climate change and energy conservation. White Cross School is based in rural Gloucestershire. Theoretically we've got the perfect site for sustainability. We're on a 35 acre site, we've got lots of trees, we're based in the Forest of Dean and yet we're part of a global environment and the engineering status lends itself directly to sustainability because Engineering is all about being sustainable. Engineering is always about getting the most out of anything that you can with the least resources. The school's devised a series of cross-year and cross-curricular projects to bring environmental issues alive and improve the school's own carbon footprint. For six weeks, this Year 7 class has been designing their very own energy island. The assignment was devised jointly by the Geography and Science Departments. It's taught in both lessons. The Energy Island project works very, very well because the students have got to take on board the impact of the entire community and they've got to look at the resources that community needs, has available to it, and how they're going to use it. And when they realise that the island they're talking about has got the same demands as their school or their local community, and then they realise from geography that we live on an island and then they find out in science that the whole globe is an island. There aren't any deliveries of resources coming. We've got to make the most of what we've got. One of the most important things is key words. It's making sure that you're all using the same terminology. And that, I mean, there's so much out there, isn't there, especially on this topic. So I'd, I'd say that was the, the key thing, is, is stripping it back, going, right, what is it that we need to do? What are the key words we need to use? And what are the phrases? This is what, this is what we need to do. Each island is assessed by the geography department, but science and ICT learning is also measured throughout the project. They've got to think about everything. So they've got to think about the type of energy that they want to use, but they also need to think about the landscape. So obviously if you've got wind turbines, you need somewhere quite high, or you need offshore, which is why the islands are perfect. If they want to use um, tidal, that's the same. If they want to use um, hydroelectric, they've got to have some kind of river, some water source that's going to enable them to do that. Um, so it's, it's making them think about where the energy comes from, because sometimes you can talk to students and they say, oh yeah, yeah, I know about solar energy. It's, okay, so where does solar energy come from? and they think about it. Well, the sun, okay, so why do we use the sun? And then you get onto the whole, well, we wouldn't be here without the sun. So then they start thinking about the bigger picture again, and oh yeah, and the sun helps things grow, and it helps us do this, and it helps us do that. So I think it makes a lot of connections for the students, and particularly when they're actually physically making something, they can see it, they're designing it, they know what they've got to do and where they've got to go with it as well, which is really important. Two years ago, White Cross School obtained the funding to build its own environmentally friendly building. Insulation, underground heating, solar powered micro generators, rainwater recycling, and its very own wind turbine are enabling this school to be greener. But it's just as important that they're able to teach the next generation of adults about the environment. Their energy focused thinking skills challenge is designed to do just that, and it's being rolled out across schools in the West Midlands. Teams of children are told that climate change has turned their own town into an island facing an energy crisis. Having designed the energy island, the next thing that happens is the children are reorganised and given new roles. They're either project leaders, they're solar investigators, they're wind investigators, or they are site surveyors. This team of trainee surveyors are taken on a tour of the school. Our ground source heat pump takes heat out of the ground and makes it into useful energy that we can use to heat the building here. The challenge is to make it real. The challenge is for the students to realise that they're not just in a lesson. And therefore we like to liberate the resources that we've got. We like to show them what a wind turbine is. We address the real realities that our neighbours, not all of them, welcomed it with open arms. We look at the rainwater collection. What can it be used for? When is it not going to be viable? 
we look at our own solar panel installations, why did we choose to have it? And so by looking at what we've got in reality, they can suddenly equate that from a lesson to what they've seen and felt and touched. And they know that what we're talking about is actually part of their life. Back in the laboratory and the wind energy team and solar energy teams are experimenting with alternative energy generation. The whole exercise concludes when teams compete to present their findings to a panel of Year 11 students. Well, the Year 11s have been working as part of their citizenship GCSE on a campaign. They chose their campaign to be a sustainability campaign and they then work with a team of Year 8s, so we've got cross-school working, and the Year 8s performed an entire survey of what buildings we've got, what they're made of, what sort of glazing we've got, down to the light bulbs we've got. So they could tell you the difference between T5, T8 and T12 fluorescent tubes. And they have compiled a 38-page report on our current energy usage, including the last two years' energy bills. And they're really impressed that for gas usage and fossil fuel usage, we're about 30% below the average school for the UK. However, for our energy use, for our electricity usage, they were not impressed because we were about 40% over what an average school should be using. The Year 11 citizenship students were so concerned about green issues, they've launched a school-wide campaign to be greener. They've got together a group of students who, who are leading on this in terms, of, in terms of the whole kind of student body. Uh, and they've come up with a number of strategies uh, that they want us to support. And cl clearly we will support because they're great ideas. Simple things, really simple things like uh, reminding kids, when you leave the room, turn the lights off. Um, how do you remind kids of that? Stickers. Um, where do we get those stickers from? Well, we don't want to be cutting down trees to do that, so is there a way in which we can produce those things without doing any further damage? Uh, the students are coming up with the ideas. They're the ones who are saying, ah, the solution to that is this. Um, and that's been fantastic. They've got to come up with the solutions because if they don't, if I say to them, look, when you leave the classroom, turn the lights off, they'll go, oh yeah, okay, and, and they won't turn the lights off. Why? Because I'll just forget. If they say, let's turn out the lights, there's far more chance that they'll turn out the lights. Well, if you want to introduce some of these ideas from White Cross School, here are the tips from their staff and pupils. It's invaluable to work with partners from outside school. Energy companies and environmental groups can offer expertise and resources. If you're designing cross-curricular projects, ensure the same keywords are used by all departments so that children are secure about what they're learning. When it comes to engaging pupils, particularly older ones in conserving energy, allow campaigns to be pupil-led. And don't forget, teachers have to do their bit to reduce the carbon footprint. To find out how you can take part in sharing your great practice, then visit the Teachers TV website and find the Sharing Your Great Practice page.